Welcome. Thank you for taking this opportunity to learn more about the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action Research Agenda. My name is Heather Kelly Thompson, and I'll be telling you a little bit more about this initiative. In 2010, the Institute of Medicine released a landmark report that outlines a blueprint for transforming the nursing profession to enhance the quality and value of U.S. health care in ways that meet future needs of diverse populations. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation agrees with and is committed to promoting the report's findings. The report makes eight recommendations relating to expanding scope of practice, nursing education, leadership, and more. The eight recommendations are listed here, and they include removing scope of practice barriers, expanding opportunities for nurses to lead and diffuse collaborative improvement efforts, implementing nurse residency programs, increasing the proportion of nurses with bachelor's degrees to 80% by 2020, doubling the numbers of doctors doubling the number of nurses with a doctorate by 2020, ensuring that nurses engage in lifelong learning, preparing and enabling nurses to lead change to advance health, and building an infrastructure to collect and analyze healthcare workforce data. So the IOM report contains much of the information needed to understand the problems and opportunities related to the challenges of the future of nursing. It was beyond the scope of the committee to plan for the implementation of the committee's recommendations. Consequently, there is room and urgency for research to discover the best approaches to advance the recommendations and ensure that efficient, effective paths will be taken to achieve the success of the campaign. In response to this report, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, in collaboration with AARP, has embarked on the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action. The campaign's vision is for all Americans to have access to high-quality, patient-centered care in a healthcare system where nurses contribute as essential partners in achieving success. The campaign aims to strengthen nurse education and training, enable nurses to practice to the full level of their education and training, advance into professional collaboration across the health spectrum, expand leadership ranks to ensure that nurses have a voice on management teams, in boardrooms, and during policy debates, and, in, and to improve healthcare workforce data collection. As part of the Campaign for Action, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is coordinating a unique multi-funder initiative to identify, generate, synthesize, and disseminate evidence essential to inform and bolster efforts to implement the IOM recommendations. Beginning in June of 2011, the Foundation began accepting brief proposals, three to five pages in length, that address the IOM research priorities listed in the research agenda. These proposals will be screened for relevance and then reviewed. While reviewed proposals are posted on a private funders community website for consideration. The research agenda features several research questions, and we will continue to be adding others on the website, but this gives you an idea of some of the types of things we hope to learn. In relation to removing scope of practice barriers, some of the questions we have asked include, do states with broad nurse practice acts have better or poorer outcomes than states with more restrictive practice acts? What are the effects of expanding scope of practice for APRNs on physician satisfaction, productivity, and income in states? Are there differences in documented care errors, never events, or malpractice claims between states with independent APRN practice and those with barriers to, in, to independent practice? In regards to the second recommendation, expand opportunities for nurses to lead and diffuse collaborative improvement efforts, some of the questions we have asked include, what payment mechanisms would incentivize diffusion of care models in which nurses lead care programs or provide coordination and collaborative leadership? What are the most effective policies to encourage diffusion of effective practices in healthcare settings? What models of care most effectively utilize the skills, expertise of nurses in primary care? In regards to recommendation three, implement nurse residency programs, some of the questions include, what is the opportunity cost of adding new, different modules to resident, residency preparation? What are the core components of effective RN or APRN residencies? Are RN or APRN residencies cost effective? In regards to recommendation four, increase proportion of nurses with bachelor's degrees to 80% by the year 2020, some of the questions include, under various scenarios, what is the likely cost and time required to achieve 80% bachelor's given current AD enrollments? 
What is the actual cost to states or federal government for association, bachelor's, and graduate nursing education? What impact would implementation of this recommendation have on community colleges' bottom line? Recommendation five, to double the nurses of a double the number of nurses with a doctorate by 2020 inspired several questions including what policy options can best address the goal of doubling the number of nurses with a doctorate by 2020? What is the range of costs of policy options to address the goal of doubling the number of nurses with a doctorate by 2020? What are the optimal salary and benefit packages to recruit highly qualified faculty away from delivery organizations and into nursing schools? In regards to Recommendation 6, ensure that nurses engage in lifelong learning. Some of the questions posed include, how can nurses' engagement in lifetime learning be ensured? What competencies are most important to contemporary nursing care? How effective are various interprofessional education models? In regards to recommenda Recommendation 7, prepare and enable nurses to lead change to advance health. Several questions were asked, including, what concepts of behavioral economics offer the most promise for provider and provider interactions and patient-provider interactions? What policies and incentives foster teamwork and professional collaboration? What new technologies support nursing decision-making and care delivery? And in regards to the last recommendation, number eight, build an infrastructure to collect and analyze healthcare workforce data, some of the questions asked include, what models are ideal for determining adequate staffing in a range of care settings? What percent of APRNs go into primary care? What are the most effective models to assess and predict current and projected nurse and nurse faculty shortages? As you can see, we are interested in a broad range of possible questions, and we expect that these projects could be conducted in a variety of ways. We are not making any predetermined suggestions on what type of projects, but do encourage you to pick the best fit for the question addressed. In addition, we are not making any limits or suggestions on funding requests. We expect that some of the questions could be addressed with a scan of existing data for $5,000, whereas some larger projects may require up to a million dollars. We will be accepting applications on a rolling basis until January 3, 2012, and as proposals come in electronically through Robert Wood Johnson's application and review system, they will be screened for relevance and quality, and then reviewed by a scholar from nursing and one from outside of nursing. Well-reviewed well proposals will be shared with our funders community so that funders can identify their interest in either funding or co-funding a project. Once a funder expresses interest in a project, the status of the proposal will be updated so that other funders know that a potential funder has been identified. The interested funder will then contact the applicant to request a full proposal. Project updates will be provided to the funder's community. At the conclusion of each research project, we will share a one- to two-page research brief on the Future of Nursing website. Reviewers are asked to assess the proposals on three criteria. One, the projects match with the goals of this research agenda. Two, potential to advance knowledge to support implementation of IOM recommendations. And three, methodological rigor. To apply for this agenda, visit www.myrwjf.org. If you have already created a profile for yourself with MyRWJF, you can log in with your email address and password. If you are a first-time visitor, you can uh, create a username and password using the Apply Online instructions. Once you have logged into my RWJF, you will see a notice for the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action. If you select that, you will be brought to a screen that shows you the proposal requirements. We are very excited about this opportunity. The stars have truly aligned for us to make a strong impact on the future of nursing. RWJ believes that in this environment of united nursing leadership with landmark health care reform, the IOM provided action-oriented blueprint, and our community of interested funders, we are poised to make a strong impact. The entire research agenda is available on the web at thefutureofnursing.org backslash research. If you're interested in following the conversation about the Campaign for Action, check it out on Twitter and Facebook. If you have questions about the research agenda or 
need some assistance in your application process, please contact me at 215-573-2981 or by email at hkelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, at nursing.upenn.edu. Thank you again for taking the opportunity to learn more about this research agenda. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.